Welcome to this QuickBooks 2020 tutorial for beginners on the difference between entering bills and expenses. So I'm here at the home screen and what I want to talk about because I, I get this question quite a bit and I run into it with clients is, okay, when do I enter a bill in QuickBooks and when do I enter just an expense and how do I do both of those? All right. So first of all, the thing to understand is that the difference between the two is uh, a bill is something that you're going to pay later. So you're going to pay it at a later date. So for example, you get um, a power bill, uh, you know, you know, whatever it is, some kind of bill, maybe it's supplies, et cetera. And you get this bill, whether it's through email or in the mail, and you are going to pay it at a later date. Okay, so typically you're going to have terms with a bill. So it could be, you know, 30 days later, 15 days later, there's some kind of due date and you can pay that later. Now, an expense is something that happens right away. So that money came out of your account right now. So let's say you use your debit card and you go to uh, the office supply store, you buy supplies. That's an expense right then. You're not going to enter a bill because you're not going to pay it later you are going to enter it directly uh, as an expense because it reduces your cash right then. Okay, so let's go through both of these. All right, so you can see here at the home screen, you've got this enter bills uh, button here. You can also go up to here and say vendors, uh, enter bills. Either one is gonna be fine. So again, this is, this is something that you receive that you can pay later. And I always tell companies and, and clients, you know, you want to make sure that if you get uh, a bill that's due, say, 30 days later, take advantage of that. You know, oftentimes it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to pay it immediately. Some people do because it makes them feel better, and that's fine. But for cash flow purposes, it makes sense to take advantage of those terms. So when we say, uh, or when, you know, an accountant or me or whoever says, you know, that's your cash flow float, you know, you want to take advantage of that because you can hold on to your cash longer. And the longer you hold on to your cash, the better in a business. All right. So a bill, let's say that we get our power bill. We're going to say this is, let's say, uh, let me look up a vendor in here that looks like a power bill. We'll say it's a water bill. Okay. Base or water. All right. So first of all, you're going to put in the date. Okay. And usually that's going to be today's date. Now, what you want to do is you want to look at the bill and say, okay, what is the, the date on the bill? Not the due date, but the date of the bill. And the reason this is important when you're entering a bill is because it typically is going to relate to a different time period than when you're entering it. So if we say this is 1130 22, uh, because it's for November instead of December 15th, we want to enter that. Now that's important again for uh, financial statements and your profit and loss and, and all sorts of reasons. Okay. Next thing you're going to put in a reference number. This is going to be your invoice number. Okay. So if you have an invoice number that, uh, the vendor has on their bill, you're going to enter it here. This is important because, uh, if you get billed twice, which happens more than you can imagine, and you enter this reference number, if you enter it again, QuickBooks will alert you to say, Hey, you've already, you know, entered this bill. Are you sure, you know, this is not a duplicate. Do you want to enter it again? So you always, you want to make a practice of putting that reference number in there. All right. Amount due. We'll say that it's 5523. Okay. Now the due date, uh, this one is defaulting for this vendor at net 30. So it automatically puts this date in there. You can change this. You can put it to 12, 24, uh, what are we in 22? Okay. So you can change that to whatever it is, but you want to put in the due date. And then of course, down here, you've got to, I'm going to say utilities. We'll see if there's a sub account here. Okay. We've got utilities water and you want to make sure you put it to the correct account. Now over here, if you are, you know, billing this to a customer or assigning it to a customer, you can put that in here and you can also put in the class, but in general, this is how you're going to enter a bill. And so we hit save and close. All right. And there's a, apparently a password back there. So we're going to hit save anyway. All right. So when we go in here and we say pay bills, you're going to see that Bayshore water right here, 5523, we owe that money and that's due on 12, 24, 22. 
And so you would select this and then pay the bill. And I cover how to do that in another video. Okay, so that's the basics of entering a bill. Now, again, you're going to do that when you owe this money to somebody later. Okay, so let's say that you just have an expense. You go to, like I said before, the office supply store, you use your debit card, you buy something, uh, or it could be you, you, know, you, you uh, go to Amazon, you buy something online, you use your debit card. You do not get a bill for that because you do not have to pay that later. All right, so there's, there's two different ways I want to show you how to enter that. All right, the first one is um, we want to, we're at the home screen here. If you go to the chart of accounts, Okay. Okay. This shows you all of your accounts here. Okay. So this one right here, the checking account. All right. So if we double click on this, you see that it brings up our check register. All right. So this is just like, you know, if, if, you know, you used to use a checkbook. Um, I personally really don't use a personal checkbook anymore, but if you, you know, if you remember back, you use a checkbook and you'd write a check and you had to record what you spent the money on and how much it was and the date and everything in the check register, a little paper, uh, register. This is the exact same thing except on your computer. All right. I like to look at this as one line because it's a little bit simpler, but what you can simply do right here. Okay. Is just enter it in your check register, all right? So in this case, you're gonna enter, since there was no check number in this column that I'm in right now, you can put EFT, you can put ACH, you can put debit, you can put uh, really whatever you want, just something other than a check number because there was no check written, all right? And you're gonna enter, I'm just gonna pick a vendor here, we'll just say this was uh, Costco, all right? And we're gonna say this was office supplies and we're gonna say 124.56. All right, so we put that in the expense column, you hit record and there it is. You record it as an expense, it comes out of your checking account. Now let me show you what it does here. So if I double click on, or if I, uh, let's say we right click on this and say edit check. All right, you're gonna see it physically puts a check into QuickBooks. Even though there's no check number and you didn't write a check, this is how it records it. All right, so you can, if you'd like to, uh, let's say we go to the home screen, a couple things here. You can use check register here, or you can just go to write checks, all right? So if you go in, we say save and new, you can go in and record a direct expense. You can put it in as a check. The only thing you wanna make sure that you do is you put you know, EFT or debit or whatever it is up here. So again, I'm going to say we went to Costco again. You have unpaid bills. We're going to say write your check. We'll say this was 51203. And we're going to say this was office supplies. Okay. And then if there's a customer job, billable, class, et cetera, you can put that in. But in general, we, you went to Costco, you use your debit card. Here you go. Okay. So this is kind of the second way you can just enter an expense directly into your check register. So if I hit save and close, all right, I go back to my check register. All right, you're going to see the 51203. So you can see both of these transactions entered directly in there. Okay, to sum it up, the main thing to remember here is that a bill is going to be something that you uh, pay later. So a vendor bills you for something and you don't have to pay it for 20, 30, 45 days, whatever it is, you're going to enter a bill and then go to pay that bill. If it's an expense that you, you know, you, you went and got gas, you, you know, went to Costco supplies, whatever it is, uh, meals, and you use your debit card, you're going to enter that directly in the register. Okay. Any questions, comments, please feel free to leave those below. Uh, also check out the QuickBooks University head over there. Lots to offer. Uh, the website is qbuniversity.org.